Hi, it's me again, Sean. Welcome to Coding Shorts. Today I want to talk about .NET 8, or more specifically Visual Studio 2022's new template for combined ASP.NET and JavaScript projects. Be able to host your JavaScript project like Vue, React, Angular, etc. directly in Visual Studio has some benefits. Let's take a look. So I'm going to start a new project. And if you search for, let's say, Vue, I'm going to do our example here using Vue. I've never understood why this search and create new project is so slow. And so you're going to see really a couple of projects. You're going to see a standalone project that can be added to any existing solution for a JavaScript view. And there's also a TypeScript view that you might want to use as well. And you'll see that you have the same flavor of Vue and JavaScript, of Vue and ASP.NET using JavaScript as well as with TypeScript. I'm going to create it with JavaScript just to make it a little easier so we can see what this actually looks like. I'm just going to call this new view template. One of the things you'll see is these pop-ups because it's actually using the command line to create both projects. And so when we get done, we end up with two folders. One is a standard web API project, which I would love it if they would allow us to name it during the process, but we're still in beta, so who knows? And we have the actual view app. Now, important to know is the new view app is using Vite, which I'm really happy about. And the way they have this set up, I'm, I want to walk you through, and then I'm going to tell you how to fix it, because I'm not a big fan of what they're doing here. So first of all, these two apps are really being treated as very separate applications. And what I mean by that is it expects your API server to be somewhere and the view app be hosted somewhere else. And this is pretty typical, putting a view app in a static website or in a small website or maybe even backed with some node projects and then having some central web API project to actually call APIs. This is really how it's set up. And this is the way I'll set it up for you. I'll put up here in the corner a link to the coding short where I talk about how to integrate them into one project where the web API project is also hosting the view. So you'd have one website and it would use relative API calls instead of fixed API calls with the domain and ports and all of that other stuff. And so what it does is it publishes the web API project and then publishes this view app. And if we actually run this, we're going to see a couple things happen. First, it's going to build and restore the project. It's actually going to run two different projects. Here is the typical .NET startup for our web server. And you can see that we're being hosted on a couple of different ports. And in another window, they're actually running the Vite project and it's being hosted in a different folder. So if we come back here to where the view app is being installed, you'll actually see this not secure because the certificate is invalid. And the template is attempting to use the developer certificate that can be installed, but it's not going so well. And so back in our code, let's, let's break this down a little. I'm gonna stop this and I'm gonna open up that vite.config. I'm gonna assume you have some familiarity with Vue or one of those. I'm actually gonna get rid of HTTPS so that it hosts itself just in HTTP. So let's run this again. So launching that bad port, we're just not listening on it anymore. And there we can see the V app work. And if we make this big enough, you can actually see that it's calling that weather API behind the scene. So they've just sort of thrown some of this weather API into the project along with the standard V stuff. I expect that some of this is gonna change as we get closer to release of Visual Studio 2022, or maybe it will be 2023 by then. Let's stop it again. It accomplishes in kind of an interesting way. It actually creates a proxy. Any request that has weather forecast in it is going to be rewritten to this other project. And the idea here is that the idea here is that it's going to attempt to handle the certificate tray. In fact, there's a bunch of code up here about figuring out where the certificates are, what to use, 
all of this. And this might work, this could work later, but I actually don't want them kind of that combined and get us like requiring these different pieces for where our certificates are and all of that. So I'm gonna take my approach, which I always enjoy, and that is I'm just gonna get rid of a lot of the boilerplate they have. So the really only boilerplate that I'm interested in here and this server is the server that the view app is actually being exposed using Vite. So I'm going to give it a bit of a more friendly port that I can actually remember. And of course, when we run this, we have our project here. And this is going to come in, but we can see this loading. It's actually loading that call to the weather forecast. And so let's figure out why. Let's refresh this. And we can see this weather forecast thinks it's working, but what it's actually returning is the V port, because what are we doing in it? When we make the request, and that's gonna be way up here in, I think, the Hello World component, do I have that right? Yeah, there's the data. Is that it's doing a fetch of just the local server, right? And so we need to actually tell this what server we're using. I actually prefer to use Axios in this case, in that I can go ahead and set the Axios instance to use the, the base URL the way we want to. And if we look over here, we know that it's gonna be 5077. I'm gonna use the insecure port, 5077. And before we make that work, let's talk about this for a minute. Because you'll notice that the highlight is on the solution. So every time we run it, it is going to run both projects like we've seen. I actually don't like this, and let me show you why. We go to project, we'll go to build and configuration manager. We'll see that it is trying to build and deploy this view app every time. And my problem there is that Vite works best when it's a long running process because it's going to quickly recompile and then hot swap the things into view. And that stuff works really well. And so I don't actually want this to be running the view app at all. I just want it to run the web API. The way I'm gonna run the view app it's using the Task Runner Explorer that I'm sure you've seen me talk about before. And there is a task in the package that Jason of the View app that I'm just going to bind to Project Open. So every time we open this project, it's just going to run it in the background, the normal thing. And this is effectively saying run npm dev that it's going to be recompiling as necessary. It actually doesn't recompile until we've actually hit something. So if we go ahead and run our view project again, here we're getting in the correct place. We can see that this is still listening on that port, but if we make a change, it actually updated a little world. And I'll see if I can zoom in so you guys can see that a little more, but just leave this running in the background. I know that all the Vite based projects have the same facility. And I know Angular has a way of doing watch that is really the same thing. And I don't like to get Visual Studio too involved in that. But for us, I want to test out our Vite app here now that it's up and running. And you actually see that it's being blocked by a cores policy. Now this is sort of expected when you're gonna host them separately. And like the video, I pointed to earlier, that is actually hosting on the same project, so you don't have any of these issues. But when you don't wanna do that, and there's plenty of cases to not do that, we're gonna to need to allow it. So how are we gonna do that? I'm gonna come over here and stop the server for a minute, and I'm just gonna go into program, and I'm gonna go ahead and say builder.services.addcores. That's just adding the requirements. And then down here, after the redirection, is I'm gonna say use cores, but I'm gonna pass in a Lambda so that I can say policy or config, I should say, config, config with origins. And here I'm just gonna give it the local host 8088. And in reality, I should be doing if environment dot builder dot environment dot is development. So we're not going to really add this for that, that, but you are going to need to figure out a way to configure it when you get into production to do the same thing, no matter where you're hosting it. That code we had gotten rid of 
uh, that was doing the proxy server, that would only work during development anyway. And so now that we've made this change, we should be able to just go over here and refresh. We can see we're getting an error still that it doesn't like this. And there's a hint here. This URL we're actually going for is being redirected to the HTTPS. We'll need to change this to the secure one. By changing to the secure one and having redirection still enabled, come back here, we go over, we can see it working again. In both those cases, you're gonna to want to use cores to allow it since they're gonna be in two different places. You really should eventually have an else here where you set up all the rules for the policy. We see it's still running and it's running and being served by Vite inside our Task Runner Explorer. We can see that as we made changes, it kept on updating it. So I think experimenting with these new JavaScript and TypeScript project types, which these project types have been there for a little while, but these are new project templates, especially to allow you to have them hosted separately, or even with this, I'm using it to host it on the same website. I'm just changing where the Razor page is going and getting these files. But again, you can see that in the video here. And since you got this far, I'm gonna ask you to like and subscribe. It's all down below the like button. Go ahead and tell me what you think of this video, whether it was helpful. And lastly, I am looking for new clients and you'll see me at sean.wildermuth.com. You can read all about the kinds of things I do and see if I can help your company. Well, you'll see in another coding short. Thanks for coming. My name is Sean Wildermuth.